Okay, stand with us this morning, if you would, please. How many of you come to worship the Lord today? And how many have come to eat lunch? Hmm, oh, okay. I, you're a very honest man. I like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you gotta, gotta come to eat. When we come to church, we come to eat, right or wrong. I'm not talking about that over there, okay? Go and try a song someone wanted this morning. I haven't done it in quite a few years. <laughs> and if I forget the words, I'll blame it on them. Lord, help me walk another mile, one more mile. I'm tired of walking all along. Oh, Lord, help me smile another smile, one more smile. I just can't make it on my own. Never thought I needed help before. Thought that I could get by by myself. Now I know I just can't make it anymore. On humble heart, on bending knees, I'm begging you, please help me. Come down. From your golden throne to me, lowly me. I need a touch from your tender hand. Take the chains now that bind me. Set me free, set me free. Show me where I fit into your master plan. Never thought I needed help before. Oh, I thought I could get by by myself. Now I know I just can't take it anymore. With a humble heart on bending knees, I'm begging you, please. Help me, help me sing it. I never thought I needed help before. Well, I thought that I could get by all by myself. Now I know I just can't make it anymore. With a humble heart on bending knees, I'm begging you, please, Lord, help me. With a humble heart on bending knees, I'm begging you, please, help me. Okay, little drummer boy, let's pick it up a little bit. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I believe that Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Just call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Just call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. 
If you need your body healed, tell him what you want. I said, if you need your body healed, tell him what you want. Well, if you need that body healed, tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Oh, if you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. I said, if you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Oh, he's got up on the platform. Got back at the door. He's God in the amen corner. He's still God forevermore. God is God. God won't ever change. God is God. And he always will be God. He's God in the Father. God in the Son. He's in the Holy Ghost. God the three in one. God is God. God won't ever change. Well, God is God. He always will be God. He's God all over the ocean. God all over the sea. He's God of creation. God of you and me. God is God and God won't ever change. God is God. He always will be God. He's God in Alabama. God in Tennessee. God in Aberdeen, Maryland, God of you and me, God is God. God won't ever change. God is God, and he always will be God. Give my little buddy practice. He's in the Father, he's in the Son, in the Holy Ghost, still God, three in one. God is, God is, God is God. God is God, and he always will be God. Help me sing it now. God all over the ocean, God all over the sea. He's God of creation. He's God of you and me. Well, God is, God is, God is God. God is God, he always will be God. Well, God is God, God is God, God is God. He always will be God, oh, God is God, is God, is God, is God, is God. He always will be God. Had to slow him down. Amen. Remain standing as I get a couple of bushers to come up, and we'll take our morning tithe and morning offering. Brother Dwayne. Well, I'm a running for my life, running for my life, running for my life, running for my life. Anybody ask you what's the matter with me, you can tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified, Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, running for my life, I'm a running for my life. Two more verses, running for my life. Running for my life, running for my life, I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you what's the matter with me, just tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, I'm running for my life. 
running for my life. Last verse, same as the first two, running my life. I'm a running for my life. Still running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, matter with me, you can tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and five have tithes. Tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and five have tithes. Tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and five have baptized. Oh, tell them that I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and five have baptized. Just tell them that I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and five have baptized. And I'm running for my life. Running for my life. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise this morning. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Now, I started feeling so good during that second song, I forgot that we're locked out of our house. <laughs> Did the keys work that I give her? Sister Paula, I hope you got a spare. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right. That's that's fine with me. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you have a key to the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I forgot all about that for a second. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we're still going to have church. We got a lot to do this morning. Uh, we got communion. I uh, got a couple of people who are going to come up after service and, and make an announcement on something that we're getting ready to do. And uh, uh, we just, we got a lot to do. If you see me disappear uh, after church around 1230, that means I went back to work. Um, I got called in yesterday about eight in the morning and uh, we were 15 hours out there on that water break and uh, mud up to my ankles and I was freezing. I couldn't feel anything. Didn't eat all day. Around 10 o'clock, we got it put back together, started back filling it, and I looked, and something else broke right next to it, and yeah, it was miserable, so uh, they called a couple other people in, and they, they wanted me to come back in this morning, but uh, thank God somebody covered for me, but I got to call them back after church, so just pray that everything gets done, and uh, Brother Mike, don't have to go back in there, amen? <laughs> you never know the, the feeling of working out there in the cold, all muddy, miserable, tired, you finally get it put back together. I started backfilling, and the one right next to it broke too. And uh, yeah, yeah, it'll it'll try you to see what you're made of. But uh, if you see me disappear, uh, that's where I went. But uh, just carry on as normal and uh, do what we got to do. And uh, how's the microphone sound? All right, a lot better than last week, huh? Yeah, I spent some time over here getting these things tuned in, so uh, everything will sound good for all the singers, and we'll have a good little time. Amen. So. Uh, having said that, uh, we're going to go into our, no, prayer, prayer. Couldn't remember if we'd done that first. It's been a long week, it's been a very long week. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do prayer requests now. Uh, remember Sister Wassum? I don't think she's here. Um, I talked to her earlier this week, and uh, she's having some, some problems and stuff, so uh, without going into detail, she really didn't want me to get into too much, but just remember her and her family, and uh, remember brother and sister Strickland, their vehicles broke down, I think, so uh, remember them, that everything uh, would get fixed, and you know, I, I, that it wouldn't break the bank, because uh, I know what that feels like, and it's not a good feeling, so remember them in prayer this morning, and uh, uh, just thankful for everybody who's out, very good crowd. And uh, I like to see things continue like this, and I believe they will if we keep on following him. Amen? So with uplifted hand, who has a prayer request this morning? Special and spoken. Earl. Amen. Remember that this morning? Thank you. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Mr. Square. Amen. <laughs> That's a good blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> One cent. <laughs> Amen. Says Pella. Hmm. Yeah. Remember them, especially this time of year with the cold and everything. Remember them. Says Pella. Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah. Mm hmm. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand for that. Amen. Prayer works. Prayer works. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. And, uh, you know, when, when we gather on Thursdays and, you know, uh, it's much more than, than just coming together, passing the time for a half hour, we're here getting a hold of God. And uh, a lot of time uh, God meets with us and, and we actually have church. And uh, I thank God for these things. And uh, I, 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 Thursday nights, I can't wait to get here. I really can't. I can't wait to get here. Uh, you ought to come and see what God's doing. Amen. That, that's all I can say. Anybody else? Amen. Never easy when you're dealing with that, but lift them up in prayer this morning. Anybody in the back? Did I miss anybody? Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll pray for them this morning. Miss somebody? All right, if not, let's come and gather around the altar or bow your head at your seats. <clears throat> Remember, it is communion morning. If there's anything between you and the Lord, let's pray and get rid of it before you take communion.
All right, if you would, let's stand, prepare for our communion. If I get four ushers up front. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
I think we forget sometimes just how serious uh, what we're getting ready to do is. And uh, I want to read the last part in the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 11. I want to read that just to remind us just how serious it is. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And listen to this, for this cause many are weak and sickly amongst you, and many sleep, or it means many are dead. So if you're not for sure this morning, I'd advise very strongly against taking. Make sure you're ready and make sure everything is right before you take of the communion. Amen. So now in verse 24. It says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Heavenly God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we felt even when we walk through the door this morning. Lord, we thank you for taking that long walk up Calvary's hill. Lord, and for laying down your life. No man took it. You laid it down willingly for everybody that is in here this morning. Thank you for your precious blood, Lord, that you shed for us for the remission of our sins. God will forever be thankful to you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands and praise them as they sing this morning. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence holy ground as I walk through the doors I could feel his presence, and I knew this was the place where love abounds, for this is the temple, Jehovah God Almighty, and we are standing in his presence on holy ground. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. 
in his presence there is joy beyond measure and at his feet peace of mind can still be found if you have the need I know he has the answer and we are standing in his presence on holy ground and we are standing on holy ground and I know that there all around let all us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground and we are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence we are standing in his presence we are standing in his presence holy ground. hallelujah let's lift our hands towards heaven look up and i want you to thank god for everything that he has done for you everything he has blessed you with if it was not for God, you would not have been able to get out of your bed this morning, get into your vehicle, and come to the house of God. But he blessed you enough to be here, amen? So let's return. Let's return and give thanks. Let her sing it again. Lift your hands and magnify the Lord this morning. And I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground as I walk through the door I could be in his presence. And I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple to hope God Almighty. And we are standing in his presence, holy ground. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence, holy ground. And let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence. Yes, we are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. Holy ground. Amen.
Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise as you're seated this morning. And I don't know about you, but when I walked through the door, I did feel his presence. I was talking to Sister Bev a little while ago, and we got to talking about different things and fellowshipping, and the presence of God began to fall. Listen, you are in his presence. I don't know if if some of you really understand that or not. But in the presence of God, problems and things just start disappearing. And I've often wondered sometimes, and it's amazed me how I look at Moses before the burning bush when that bush out there in the desert should have completely incinerated. But yet, it was not harmed, even though a great fire was burning upon it. God can get in your natural situation and not disturb anything around you. That bush should have consumed and went up. But that fire, and I said that fire, and I got listening to Sister Opal this morning, and you know, I, it's been a long week, and, and time has been hard to come by with studying and stuff. So uh, when I was in my vehicle the other day making my routes all day driving, I put my earphones on, and I turned the Book of Acts on, on audio, and it was like two and a half hours for the whole book. And before I knew it, I had finished it from front to back. Listen, there's ways, if, if, if you want to find a way, God will show you a way. Amen? And you'll be surprised at how much will sink into your inner conscience just by putting it on and listening to it. You'll be surprised, and, and I got thinking, what in the world, God, do you want us to do this morning? I, I had a thought, but I wasn't sure. Then I walked in, and I heard Sister Farmer talking about the Holy Ghost. And I said, all right, Lord, I know what I've got to do this morning because it's lining up with right with the little thought that you gave me. And I'm excited. Listen, I'm going to take my time this morning. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And whatever God wants to do this morning, I want to give him free course to do what he needs to do. Some of you are sitting in here, and you, you may be spiritually shackled and spiritually chained, but when God shows up, those things will completely fall apart. I know God has set me free. I know God has delivered me. And I know he's done it for a lot of folks in here this morning. I'm no longer a servant to sin. I'm no longer bound to sin. I don't fear death because I got somebody who overcame death. He overcame hell. He overcame the grave. And his name is Jesus. And he's walking in our midst this morning. He's here to bless you. He's here to bless you. He's here to lift you up. Hallelujah. And he's even here, if you want to, if you yield, he's even here to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. I said and fire. Somebody say and fire. You know what? That's what's missing from a lot of the church world this morning. They say they got the Holy Ghost, but where is the fire that accompany? You ain't hearing me. Where is the fire that accompanies the Holy Ghost? I got a few scriptures I want to read this morning. If you will, real quick, let's turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, and then we're going to turn to the book of John. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read verses 4 through 11. And then we'll go to the 14th chapter, the Gospel of John. Chapter 12, starting in verse 4. Reads like this. 
Now, there are diversities of gifts, different gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, different ways that the same gift will work. But it's the same God that worketh all in all. But the manifestation, amen. Somebody say manifestation. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. And my Lord, don't we need that today? To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. And I want to read verses 16 and 17. And I love these verses. I love these scriptures. And this is Jesus talking. And he says, And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. Now think about that. Jesus, what a comfort in himself. But he said, you know what? He's in the business of adding. He said, I'm going to give you another one. <laughs> I'm go Besides me, I'm going to give you another comforter. Hallelujah. You can't go wrong serving God. And listen at this, that he may abide with you forever, my Lord and my God. <laughs> Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, notice what the Holy Ghost is, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but Ye know him, my Lord and my God. <laughs> you know him. How many of you in here know him? <laughs> this is good. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. That means he's always with you. And we just got done reading. He will abide with you forever. The last part says, and shall be in you. Hallelujah. If you love him, raise your hands and praise him. Thank him for the scriptures. And I just simply want to preach about this morning, whatever time God allows, about the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. And if you look in the Old Testament, and you know what I've heard people say over the last week? We really don't go into the Old Testament. Well, I feel sorry for you. The Old Testament is a schoolmaster to bring us to the new and bring us up to date where we are. And you'll see things foreshadowed all throughout the Old Testament. Throughout the Old Testament, you'll see the hand of God mightily upon his servants. You'll see the anointing of God mightily anointing his people. And it talks about the anointing and about how precious it is. Like the anointing oil that ran down the beard of Aaron. Hallelujah. And I believe 
some of that anointing as we speak and as we sit here. It's beginning to flow upon some of you even now as we speak. God is beginning to pour his cup and tilt it in your direction. You say, God, I've missed it before. When he pours it out this time, I don't think we're going to miss it. Hallelujah. I believe God is going to anoint his people and even this church heavier than he ever has before because of the present hour that we live in. If you sing, you will sing with a stronger anointing. When you testify, you will testify with a stronger anointing. If you play, you will play. I believe as David played and the the evil spirits were driven from the room, from the anointing of the man of God. And throughout the Old Testament, we even see signs of the Holy Ghost. What do we think it was that gave Samson his power what came upon him? What do we think it was? How could a man in himself lift up the gates to a city and walk away with them? In himself, he could not, but because of the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon him. And the Bible says you receive power after he comes upon you. He came upon Samson many times. It was not Samson in his own power. For the Bible says it is not by our power, but it's by my spirit, saith God. Thank God for his spirit in our everyday life. What is it that would come upon a man and make him outrun horses? What is it that would come upon a man? Hallelujah. (laughs) And have him to take the jawbone of an ass and slay a thousand people. What are you talking about, Brother Mike? I'm talking about what Jesus said the day that he was taken away in a cloud and received up into heaven. And these verses and the scriptures that we read, and he said, it is expedient. Now this is Jesus talking. Jesus said, it's expedient. It's necessary. He said, I have to leave. I've got to get out of here. It's expedient. I've got to get back. But he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to give you another (laughs) besides myself. (laughs) And he is the great comforter. I've had him to comfort me in the midnight hours to when I didn't think I was going to live to see the sun come up. I've had him comfort me in those hours. I'd have him comfort me when the bills were high and the funds were low. I've had him comfort me in those times. I've had him comfort me and so have you. When we've heard that loved ones are not doing so good. When we've heard things have turned for the worse. And in our natural mind, right away it wants to panic and think the worse. But there's another power. And that's the Holy Ghost power. And it'll come upon you and he'll start talking to you. He'll start witnessing to you. Letting you know that everything. I said that everything is going to be all right. I said everything is going to be all right. I don't know what you face this morning. I don't know what you face this present hour. But there is somebody that Jesus went back to heaven and he prayed to the Father. And all of a sudden, he, he came. His name is the Holy Ghost of God. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. I said somebody shout Holy Ghost, 
If you were not aware of this, you are in a Pentecostal church this morning who believes in the operation of the Spirit of God that we just read about. I believe in the laying on of hands. I believe in prophecy. I believe in interpretation. The new modern age may not believe it. Well, I feel sorry for you because as far as I know, I still live in the church age. I still live the book of Acts is not finished. There's another chapter. Oh my God, I wish you could feel it. I said there's another chapter that's getting ready to be written and it involves everybody in here. Oh, hallelujah. In the last day, saith God, I'm going to pour out, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. God, I want you to pour it out this morning. Lord, pour your cup, tilt it towards me. God, Give me the anointing that I need to face the devil when I wake up in the morning and he's right in front of me. God, give me the anointing that I need to put him right where he belongs and that's under my feet. I said under my feet. He's been in your business for too long. He's been in your house for too long. He's been in the church for too long and it's time that the church makes an all-out assault on the gates of hell to take back what is rightfully ours. If you love him, raise your hands and praise him. Talking about the, see, this is what's missing. This is what's missing in the church. They've legislated and done so many things. They done ushered God right out the door. Last time I checked, this is his house. And it always be his house. And except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Hallelujah. If you love them, raise your hands and praise them. I can feel this thing building. Those of you who do not know what I'm talking about this morning, it's time. I said it's time. <laughs> it's time. I can feel it in my spirit. I believe the gift of the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out once again. So easy. Mom told me one time she would just walk in here and this church sister farmer walked up to her and said, hey, sister, do you want the Holy Ghost? She said, yeah, sure. She said she laid hands on her and boom, there he went. <laughs> Brother Powell told me I don't know how many times. He said, Brother Huffman used to tell me all the time, Brother Mike, he never seen a shoe without a tongue. If you have them, you'll know it. And how important is he? So important <laughs> that even Jesus, how many of you hear what I'm saying? That even Jesus, when he went down to the Jordan River to be baptized of John, <laughs> that's how important he is. And as John baptized him and Jesus came up straightway, the Holy Ghost descended in the form of a dove. <laughs> My Lord, he's fallen in here this morning. He's in here. I, I know he's in there. I hear him talking everywhere. The same Holy Ghost that fell on Jesus also falls upon you. And Jesus, one of the last things that he ever did, one of the last things he had, that he ever said, he told his disciples to go and tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry. No matter how long it took, I want you to hunker down. I want you to get together. 
I'm leaving, boys. I'm leaving this ministry in your hands. And I know it's going to be in good hands because the, the one that's coming to take my place, <laughs> he shall be with you. He shall be in you. He shall work through you. He shall talk through you. He will heal through you. He will prophesy through you. He will cast out devils through you. Hallelujah. He will praise through you. He will worship through you. I wish you could hear what I'm preaching about this morning. Hallelujah. My Lord, if the church could ever get it settled in their head and in their spirit, just what the Holy Ghost is and what he's all about, you'd turn towns upside down. you turn your work place upside down for he is power. I said he is power and you receive power when he comes upon you. How do you think miracles and things are performed? We just read it. How do you think the movement of old, what do you think it was all about? Because they were entrenched. They were filled. They were baptized. And Jesus told them disciples, he said, Truly John baptizes you with water unto repentance, but in not many days. Very soon, Jesus said, I will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Hmm. In the Holy Ghost. Lord, do it again, Lord. Lord, baptize us again, Lord. Lord, move through our churches again, Lord. Let the fire fall again, Lord. Speak through us again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. And he told him, I want you to go tarry at Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. And a cloud received him up into heaven out of their sight. And they went and they tarried and they began to pray. Approximately 120 in a very small upper room. But you see, they were there for a purpose, they were there for a reason. They went there expecting. They didn't know what to expect. They didn't know how it was going to come, what form it was going to come. All they knew is Jesus told them to go there and pray and tarry, and that's what they did. You know what? It doesn't take God all day to show up and do something because the Bible says suddenly. <laughs> I looked that up this morning, and it means unexpectedly. When you're not expecting your blessing, it will show up suddenly. There it was. Suddenly you were healed. Suddenly he blessed you. Suddenly he reached down his nail-scarred hand and pulled you up out of the mire of clay. Oh, I wish you could hear what I'm preaching about this morning. Suddenly it happened. Oh, praise God. Oh, I want you to listen to what I'm saying this morning. It's important that we all get baptized in the Holy Ghost. We need to preach them again. We need to teach them again. He's needed in our schools He's needed in our society. He's even needed in the church world. Oh, hallelujah. Talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. And it's that Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Yeah, it's keeping me alive. Said that Holy Ghost and fire. Hmm. Keeping me alive. I said, Jesus is keeping me alive. I said that Holy Ghost and fire, my Lord, keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's a Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive. My Jesus is keeping me alive. Well, it's all over me. Keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's all over me. 
keeping me alive. My Jesus is keeping me alive. It's all over me. He's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. Holy Ghost and fire, keeping me alive. My Jesus, keeping me alive. <laughs> They were in an upper room, all with one accord, till the Holy Ghost came down, as promised by our Lord. Well, oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Well, oh, Lord, send the fire just now and baptize everyone. Come on now. Well, oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Well, oh, Lord, send the fire just now and baptize everyone. Baptize us again, Lord. Pour it out again, Lord. Baptize us all again, Lord. Bring it back to remembrance what it was all like, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's good to us, isn't he? I'm just getting started. <laughs> that stuff over there can wait. I'm just getting started. You can be seedler. You can keep praising. Now, talking about the Holy Ghost. And I wanted to tie then this story in with it. I want you to listen to this. The power that he brings. We talked last week about the fruit of the Spirit. This week we're hitting a little bit on the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. I... When I get a chance, I listen to a lot of old stuff. And the Bible says, remove not the old landmark. There's a reason for that. I got listening to a testimony. And man, you got to hear this one. That R.W. Schambach gave, and this happened back in 1957. Back then, he was the song leader for Brother A. Allen. And he said this particular series of meetings that they were having, they were in an auditorium that held about 3,000 people. And how this all came about, he said, this was a man who witnessed everything. I remember Brother Pyle telling me one of the first miracles he ever saw was when Brother Schambach preached in this new inn said there was a little boy here, and I believe he couldn't talk. Was that it? He couldn't talk. Couldn't hear. Couldn't hear. Couldn't talk either because he couldn't hear. And he said, Brother Schambach prayed for that boy, and he said by the time he left, that boy was saying his ABCs. <laughs> and Brother Schambach said, I... I was riding to a service one night with a young man, and he asked me, and he said, Brother Schambach, what is the greatest service? And boy, he said, what is the greatest thing you have ever witnessed God to do? And he, and he, he went on to tell this story. He called it 26 Miracles. He said they were having a crusade in Birmingham, Alabama. Said about 3,000 people this place held, and they had three services a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And he said, I preached the afternoon one. He said, I always preached faith to get the people ready for Brother Allen's service at night so they could receive. And he said, this one service in particular, he said there was a lady that came there from Knoxville, Tennessee. And he said she had a four-year-old little boy carrying him around. He said, now this boy was born 
with no male organs, no shoes because he have he had clubbed feet. You don't put shoes on clubs. He said his tongue was about that long, and it said it, it hanged down to about there. Said he had no spinal cord, and he said his elbows and knees were touched together where he was bundled up. And he said they were actually, actually protruding back into his ribs. Said he couldn't see. He said when you looked into that little boy's eyes, he said they were just milky white, couldn't see, couldn't talk couldn't hear. And he said the doctors gave that little boy about one year to live. But those doctors I don't knew that believe or knew that there was a service four years later that was ordained for that little boy and his mother to be in. And Brother Shambach said that he said back in those days that they had so many people that he said they would, if you had a prayer request, if you wanted somebody to pray for you, he said they filled out a prayer card. And he said this lady came to him with this little boy. And he said, Brother Shambach, he said, I've been here all week. He said, is the man of God going to pray for my boy or not? He said, I've been to all three services. He said, I've gave it all three services. He said, tonight's the last night. She said, I have $20 to my name. She said, I have $15 for his doctor appointment when I get back, and I have $5 for gas. She had to go from Birmingham, Alabama to Knoxville, Tennessee, is where she lived. And Brother Shambach looked at her and he said, he said, I don't know. He said, if he's going to call your card or not, but he said, if he doesn't, he said, I promise you, I will come myself. I'll pick that little boy up. And he said, I'll take him to that camper where he's staying at on the, on the fairgrounds. He said, I'll get him to lay his hands on him. I'll get him to pray for you. So they said service started that night. Brother Shamrock said that place was packed. He said on this side of the stage, he said there was about 12 wheelchairs with people that could not walk. He said on this side, there was about 12 gurneys. And he said, service started, and he said, and the, we read about the manifestation of the Spirit earlier. That's why I read it in Corinthians. And he said, God used to use Brother Allen in different ways. He said, halfway during his preaching or sometime during his preaching, he would stop. He said he would close his eyes and he said, God is taking me out. God is taking me on a trip right now. And then he would begin his real ministering. But he said, Brother Allen done something that night. He said, I'd never seen him do before. He said he jumped off and he, he jumped up and he grabbed the offering plate. And he said, I'd never heard him say this before. He said, I want to take an offering of faith right now. And he said, I looked around at a couple of the folks next to me. He said, we just shook our heads. I had never heard him say that before, an offering of faith. I said, what is he talking about? And he said, before he knew it, that lady who said she only had $15 for her son's doctor appointment, five to get back on, she was the first one running down the aisle. He said she threw it in, and Brother Shambach said, I had to go down there and see. He said, I knew what her situation was. He said, I knew she only had $20. He said, I went and stood next to Brother Allen. I looked at him and he said, there was a $20 bill. He said, I went back behind the curtains out back and started crying. And he said, Lord, give me that kind of faith. <laughs> he said, God, give me that is faith. He said, God, I want that kind of faith that you, that you have drawn out of this woman. And he said, Brother Allen started to minister, and he said all of a sudden he stopped. And he closed his eyes. And he said, God has taken me on a trip. And he said, I'm looking, and he said, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. And he said, I, I see a big white building. And he said, I'm coming closer to it. He said, it's a hospital. And he said, I'm going up into a room, and I see... 
Twelve doctors gathered around a little baby boy. And Brother Shambach said, I knew it was that little boy's night. He said, I knew. He said, God, this is going to be the night. And he said, I'm counting a number, four, 12. He said, 26 major diseases this little boy has. And he said, I'm looking, and he said, and he even named the car. He said, you've got an old Ford. He said, you've got a baby buckled up in the back. He said, I see you pulling out her on these campgrounds. He said, you're here tonight. He said, if you bring that little boy up, he said, God's going to heal him right now. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost and what he does and the knowledge that he brings and the gifts that he gives. That's what I'm talking about. Without that, that is not possible. So he said that woman came up and she brought that little boy up and put it in Brother Allen's arms and he started walking around with it. Brother Shambach said, Brother Allen said, I want everybody to close their eyes and pray. Brother Shambach said, no, sir, I'm not missing this one. He said, no, sir, I'm not bound. I'm not closing my eyes. He said, I'm going to see what God does. I'm not. He said, I'm going to do it. He said, I'm going to watch and pray. So he said, that's exactly what he did. And he said, I, I walked down there by that little boy, all matted and all mangled, clubbed feet, tongue down the hair. He said, the man of God started praying. He said, all of a sudden, he said, he heard. That tongue snapped back into place. He said, that tongue, I said, I heard it. Snapped back in, went back into his mouth. Brother Shambach said, this little boy who had never seen before, and it says, Mom, standing over on the other side of the platform just bawling. How would you feel? And Brother Sandbox said, I've never seen anything like this. He said, I looked into that baby's eyes, two milky white eyes. He said, a whirlpool, and both of them started spinning. <laughs> and he said, when that little boy opened his eyes, he said, it was a beautiful brown-eyed little boy. <laughs> he said, the, looked like a whirlpool in both of them. And they, when they got done spinning, God gave them two beautiful brown eyes. He said, I heard another sound. And he said, his arms and legs that was all handabashi, handarabashi, was all crunched up. He said, they begin to pop. Shambach said, I'm standing there watching this. He said, this leg popped, this one popped. These ones opened up just like this. He said, he looked down. He said, he looked at those clubbed feet. No form, no shape. Shambach said, I stood right there and I watched it when it happened. He said, we used to buy our kids silly putty when they were little. He said, it looked like God had silly putty and he just watched them shape those toes. Some of you might not believe, that's why you'll never receive. But if you can believe it, I said, if you can believe it, God can do it. And he said, he watched him form feet on that little boy right in front of his eyes. He said all of a sudden he got up. And of course he had never laid eyes on his mom before. He was blind. Couldn't talk. But he said instantly knew. He said he looked over. On the side of the stage he said that little boy who was all deformed, tongue hanging out, no vision, clubbed feet, said he went running to his mom and jumped into her arms and he said a word. He said, Mama, 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 Mama. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. If you can believe it, you can receive it. And he said, it wasn't done. He said, I looked over and he said, nobody prayed. He said, it was just like everybody was in tune. He said, we looked over on the right side of the stage he said, and instantaneously, all 12 of those folks who were in them chairs got up and started walking around. He said, everybody looked to the left. There were 12 gurneys with people dying of disease. He said, they got up, they folded them, and they left. 
He said, I looked coming down the aisle. He said folks had had uh, hearing aids in and they were like transistor radios back then. He said they'd come up and they laid them down on the altar. He said he looked, there's about a dozen people coming down the, the aisle with red canes, completely blind. Said they all brought them up. Every one of their eyes opened up. They said they brought them up and threw them down at the altar. But the Sheenbach said that was the only time I'd ever seen everybody in the place got healed. I said everybody in the place got healed. When I was sick and laying in my bed in Virginia about 15 years ago, not knowing whether I was going to live or not knowing whether I was going to die, didn't even know what was wrong with me. Wondered if I'd ever preached again, if I would ever preach again. I remember Dad called me one day. We were talking on the phone, and I could barely talk. I was so weak, didn't know what was wrong, couldn't work. But there was a comforter by me every step of the way. Without him, I would not be here. And I didn't feel spiritual. I was sick. Couldn't even raise my head up. Me and Dad got to talking about church, and I remember telling him, and the Lord just brought it back to me. And the Spirit of God came on me. The Holy Ghost came on me. And I said, one of these days soon, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon the church and everybody inside is going to be healed. My Lord and my God, I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. I wish you could receive, praise God. I wish you could understand what we're talking about this morning. Hallelujah. And I believe that time is now. I said, I believe that time is now. If you've got the Holy Ghost, I want you to stand with me. Everybody stand near their feet this morning. How many of you in here baptized in the Holy Ghost? I want you to go to somebody and don't be backwards, don't be bashful, don't be shy. Somebody, I don't know what's wrong with them. Maybe you do. I want you to go and I want you to lay hands on them. I want you to pray for them and believe God is going to heal them. Believe God is going to give them their miracle. If God speaks through you, then you let it out. Go ahead, go grab somebody, lay hands on them. My Lord, start praying the prayer of faith. It's time we stir up the gift of God that's inside of Lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, don't be shy. Don't be backwards. Just now. Go lay hands oh, on somebody and let it out. There it is. Baptize everyone. There it is. Oh, Lord, Hallelujah. send there the it is. Holy Ghost. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord, send the Holy Ghost. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord, send the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Baptize everyone. Hallelujah. Go to multiple people, lay hands on them. I guarantee you folks are going to testify later. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Power, power, that there it is. work and power in the blood. Hallelujah. Of the Lamb. There is power, Hallelujah. power, there's wonder work and power. Precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, would you be free Sheila, from the burden give you a of come up here. Power in the blood. Power in, power the, in the blood. blood. Would you over Go ahead, keep on praying. Victory. Keep on praying. Wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power. 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 There's wonder working power in the blood. Power. Of the Lamb. There is power. Power. There's wonder working power it's time, in the sister. precious it's time. blood of the Lamb. It's time.
There it is. <laughs> she just got filled. <laughs> just got baptized in the I heard it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just got baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power, power, what you quit for? If you can only believe. Only believe all things are possible if you only believe. Only believe. Only. If you only believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, all things are possible, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, all things are possible, Lord, I Hallelujah. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Just as I am. If you do not know God today, and wait, waiting not. If you're lost, to undone, if you're not saved, I'm just going to ask you quite simply, of one get out of that seat and let's come down to this aisle. Let's get let's kneel down here and let's get things straightened out with God. He's in here, he's drawing, I can feel it. Each part. Don't fight this this morning. Just give in to it. Yield. There's a better way. Come on, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Don't let Satan hold you there. Let's get things straightened out today. There's a great mighty work to be done. It's going to be quick. It's going to be fast. But there is a work to be done. Anybody anywhere, or come kneel down and pray. While we tarry just for a minute. I believe. Of God, I come. I Just a few more moments, then we're going to change the order. Don't walk out of here today unsaved. Do not leave this presence without your name getting written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, saints of God praying, if you don't come to this altar, I'm going to ask you to bow your head at your seat. Bow your head at your seat. And I want you to pray after me. Heavenly Father, 
I'm lost. I'm undone. Lord, I'm a sinner. I know this. I acknowledge this. But I also believe that your son laid down his life for me. Lord, I accept your plan of salvation for my life. I ask you, God, to come into my life. I ask you to take this old spirit out and place a new spirit inside. I ask you to take this heart, this old one, this stony, this cold, this broken one, take it out and put a new one in that you can work with. Cover me in your precious blood. Forgive me my sins and write my name down in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, you need to tell somebody. Because there's a new name written down in glory. Sing that for me this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's Turn around and shake somebody's hand. Written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, yes it's, it's mine. mine. The bride robed oh, angels sing the story. A sinner. A sinner has, has come, come home. home. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a new name. Thank you, Jesus. Down in glory. Oh, it's mine. Yes, Oh, Lord. yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven. I'm bound for heaven nevermore to roam. I was once a sinner, Hallelujah. but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. Then it's truly given. Put your hands together. I found he always kept Hallelujah. his word. Well, there's a new, new name, name written down in glory. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yes, yes it's, it's mine. mine. And the white robed angel sing the story. A sinner, a sinner has, come has come home. Hallelujah. That the new name written down. Thank in you, glory. Jesus. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Thank you, Lord. With my sins forgiven, I'm bound for heaven, never more to roam. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise this morning. Thank him for what he's done. I appreciate his presence. I appreciate his spirit. Amen. Have you enjoyed yourself in the Lord's house this morning? <laughs> now, before we go next door, I told you we've been praying about some stuff and, and trying to get some stuff in motion. So, Jody, Martha, come on up. Serena, whoever else, bring your whole crew. <laughs> Give them your attention. It's only for a few minutes. And, then, and let's get behind them. So we've been really excited recently. Um, before I even started to come back here and start attending here again, um, the Lord had placed on my heart that the youth and the young adults of today's society are being hit very hard. Amen. And they need the church to step out and to show them love and to be there for them. And um, he just kind of told me, like, you know, he wanted me to do a conference. And um, after I started attending here again, you know, and everything, and um, through prayer and everything, we've realized that we also want to start doing a service for them on Wednesday nights, having a um, youth and young adult service. Um, right now we're starting with ages 15 to 35. Um, eventually, we'd like to have a group of even younger kids, um, but our hope is, you know, maybe we get the older ones in here and we start discipling them, and they can eventually start to disciple the younger ones. So um, we're just really excited. We hope that you can get behind it, but the conference, we're going to do a conference as well. That's going to be on May 25th, and the um, theme of it is going to be Hurt, the four-letter word of the modern-day church, because um, a lot of our youth and our young adults, they've left the church because of hurt. Or if they've never been in church, they have hurt and they can't figure out how to get rid of it. 
And we as the church need to step forward and show them, you know, we are a new church. We're not the same. You know, we're here to help everyone. We're here to help you. We don't want to hurt you. We want to be here for you and show you the way to the one person that can heal every hurt. Um, so we're just, we're really excited for this. And we hope, um, you know, if anyone's interested in helping out, we are trying to get child care um, for some of the parents that come that have children that they can come up and just enjoy and not have to worry about their kids, um, that that would be taking care of them for them. Um, we're going to feed everybody that comes. We don't want to charge anybody that comes. This is a free event. We want to get you in here. And we want to we shower you with love and show you love. But um, I have flyers if you want some to take them and hand them out, just let us know. Um, we're also going to try to get one hung up. Um, I was talking to Beverly about that last Sunday. We're going to get one hung up down here at the bottom. Um, but we're just really excited. And this first one, we're going to start it this Wednesday. So I know it's not a lot of warning, but the first one is actually just going to be kind of a meet and greet and a get to know each other. Um, we're going to have some games, maybe get some pizza. But um, it's just a really get to know you type thing. And then the next one, we're going to actually start in with teaching and, you know, developing developing people because you know there are there are people out there that have, they don't know anything about the Lord so it's, it's really good we're excited to get out there and be able to teach them but we just hope that you know if you're interested let us know uh, the time is going to be for Wednesday nights it's going to be seven o'clock the conference is going to be um, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and there's going to be a lunch break in the middle but we're just excited and if you have any questions just see one of us thank you May 25th. So, hey, get behind them. People are stirred. They want to do something. We need the youth. Amen. Pray for them. Get behind them. Support them. And let's see what God can do with us. Let's see where he can take it. Amen. So, let me ask the blessing right now so we can get that done. <clears throat> All right. Pray with us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what you've done in our midst. I want to thank you for your great and mighty blessings that you've poured out upon us today. Lord, we thank you for those that have labored, Lord, in making our, our meal and our fellowship dinner possible. Lord, and we ask you to bless all the food. Lord, especially those that took time out, Lord, in the cleaning and the preparation and the gathering of everything so that we may partake of it. Lord, nourish it for our body. We'll forever give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would.